Hey future lawyers, this is Kate Harsito and welcome back to my channel where I create content like tips and tricks on how to survive law school and the bar exams. So if you are aspiring to be a lawyer someday, you are in the right channel. But before anything else, please consider subscribing to my channel and please hit the notification bell to be updated with my vlogs. In today's video, I will be reacting to the Bar Boys movie but not only that but I will also be giving some recitation tips on how to survive the Socratic method that we use in law school. And syempre, alam kong inaabangan nyo kung sino ang winners ng ating January giveaway. So if you want to find out all of this, dyan lang po kayo. And with that, this hearing is now in order. Just to give you a short background of the movie Bar Boys, it was written and directed by Direct Keep Owebanda and it was released last August 16, 2017, the year when I also took my bar exams. Nung panilabas tong pelikula na to, hindi ko siya agad napanood since it was during my review period. But when I saw this film a year later, it was very nostalgic for me. Not only because I experienced the experiences that the characters went through, but also because the film was shot in my university. Sa San Beda College of Lomenzola po kinunan yung pelikula. So imagine yung mga nasa pelikula, actual classrooms namin, actual library namin, and even si Vance Larena, si Lord Master dun sa pelikula, ay bidista talaga. He was also a law student during my time. So now, I will watch the film again, and I will react kung totoo ba yun, nangyayari ba talaga sa totoong buhay, or exaggerated ba yung scenes ng pelikula. And also, along the way, I will also be giving some recit tips on how to survive the Socratic method. Ano ba yung Socratic method? So, Socratic method came from Socrates, a Greek philosopher, who believes that he is ignorant. So, by recognizing his ignorance, he keeps on asking questions hanggang makuha niya yung sagot. And he believes that he should ask everything and everyone. Ganun yung ginawa nating teaching method sa law school kasi it fosters critical thinking. So, yung mga professors, tanong lang sila ng tanong hanggat mahugot nila yung sagot sa'yo. So, yun po yung method na ginagamit sa law school. So, panoorin na natin ang film. Let's watch this. First scene. Welcome and congratulations to all of you. I would love to address you all. Please focus me to pa Future lawyers. Ah! Pero hindi lahat kayo. Pasok. Only a few of you will graduate from this school. That is a fact. Last year, parang ganito din kadami yung mga hopeful people, around 200 yon, with section A to H. By the time they graduate, 44 na lang ang natirang sadyante. At ang section, isa at kalahati pa. This scene for me is so, so, so true. Nung nag-orientation ako, sobrang dami namin. No first year kami, I think ang section namin ay hanggang section R. So, from A to R. Tapos may S pa, may section S. So, imagine ilang sections yun, mga 18, 19 sections. Pero nung graduate kami sa law school, hanggang letter E na lang kami. So, 6 sections na lang. So, ganun ka grabe yung paglagas. Actually, sinasabi sa amin ng prof namin pag first year, Tignan nyo na yung dalawa nyong katabi sa kanan at kaliwa kasi habang umakyat kayo ng year level, paubos kayo ng paubos. So, this is actually true. Punta tayo dun sa next scene, yung first day yata nila to. Good evening, class! I am attorney Victor Cruz. I graduated from this prestigious university some years back, I won't say when, because I don't like to live my age. Teacher natin yan. Yes, way. As I was saying, I was number eight in the bar exams when I took up masters at Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. I happen to have especially good hearing, so I would appreciate if you keep the personal conversations to a minimum, especially about me. Index cards, please. Una, ang gwapo ni Prof, in fairness, sa kanina. Doon sa scene yun, na may nag-pretend na studyante, di ba? So, yan, posible yan, actually. Meron ng mga professor sa law school na sobrang bata, nakala mo ka-age mo lang. Sa BEDA, in particular, kapag bar top na, sure ka, pwede ka na agad magturo following year ng pagpas mo ng bar exam. So, posible na may ganun ka bata. Ang tip ko sa inyo, before you enter any class, Alamin nyo na kung sino yung professor and mag-stock na kayo kasi syempre, 
hindi lang dapat kayo prepared academically, pero dapat prepared din kayo dun sa prof mismo. Alamin nyo na from your upper classmen friends kung ano yung mga must know tungkol dun sa professor na yun. Kasi may mga iba-ibang technique ng mga prof eh, di ba? Paano ba siya magtawag? Ano bang favorite topic niya dun sa subject na yun? Ano yung pinaka dapat mong malaman? Ano bang ayaw niya sa estudyante? Okay lang ba sa kanyang naka-t-shirt sa klase? Okay, okay lang ba sa kanyang naka-makeup sa klase? Iba-iba yan ang mga hilig at iba-iba yan ang mga gusto at ayaw. So, maggawa na kayo ng due diligence na kumbaga alamin nyo na yung background ng prof para mapaghandaan mo yung lahat ng aspeto tungkol sa subject na yun. At hindi kayo mabulaga na parang ganyan. Di ba? You read Shi Ming Choi vs. Court of Appeals. Yes, sir. What was Miss Gina Choi's complaint versus Mr. Shi Ming Choi? She filed for annulment on the ground of psychological incapacity, sir. Anong mga basis niya? Um, nung nag-honeymoon po sila, ayaw makipag-sex ang husband niya sa kanya. Tapos, nahuli niya pong ginagamit ang eyeliner ng nanay niya. <laughs> Nagduda siya, baka gay ang asawa niya. And she also said that he is impotent and he had a... And he had a what? A tiny finish. <laughs> How small? Very small. Not specific enough. How many inches? Um, Sir Cruz... Una-una... Nakita nyo si ate, sobra siyang tense, simula umpisa pa lang. So, try to be relaxed as much as possible. Siyempre, mahirap yun, lalo na kung first day nyo pa lang sa klase. Pero, it shows kasi kapag sobra kang kinakabahan, tas minsan yung mga prof pa naman kapag kinakabahan ka, parang lalo kang sisindakin. Tas ikaw din, hindi ka rin makakaisip masyado kapag hindi ka relax. So, yun yung first point. Second point, you should always speak in English. Well, dito naman kasi tinanong siya in Filipino. So, sumagot din siya in Filipino. So, pwede naman siguro kasi, well, pelikula. But most of the time, hindi talaga nagtatagalog sa class. Lalo na kung during recit. So, always speak in English and always watch your grammar. Ang tip ko doon, think in English kasi para hindi na kayo nagta-translate kasi kapag Filipino mo siya iniisip tapos ita-translate mo siya sa English may lag time siya sa utak eh so try to practice thinking in English so kapag nagre-review kayo ng cases mag-practice recit na kayo sa bahay para English na yung pagkwento nyo sa utak nyo. Third point, you have to be precise and concise with your answer. So, dito, tinanong siya ng prof ko na yung actual measurement ng penis. Hindi niya nasagot, sinabi lang niya very tiny. So, it was not accurate. Dapat kasi kung ano yung nakasulat sa kaso, yun mismo yung sasabihin nyo. Since meron kasing measurement dun sa Chi Ming Choi versus CA mismo na case, yun yung hinahanap ng professor. So, as much as possible, read the full text of the case para mahanap nyo yung mga important details na maaring hanapin ng prof during recit. Okay, so let's move on to the next scene. Mr. Funny Guy, how many inches? Um, it was clinically found to be uh, three inches and one centimeter, like, uh, like this. <laughs> Pag matigas. Precisely. Now, last question. Does the law provide that husband and wife live together and observe universal love, respect, and fidelity? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Uh, it's not universal love. It says mutual love. Obliged to observe mutual love. Where is that shown? Your last question, sir. I'm a lawyer. I lie. I kind of do that sometimes. Uh, Article 68 of the Family Code, sir. Dito sa scene na to, okay yung ginawa ni Rocco kasi he was able to answer kung ano yung facts na hinahanap ng professor dun sa case. So he was very precise dun sa answer niya na ilang inches yung penis ni Chi Ming Choi. So nasagot niya yun. Number two, he was also precise when he was able to identify kung alin yung maling word dun sa statement. 
na magaling siya doon kasi usually professors make those tricky questions to validate ko na intindihan mo at nalaman mo ba talaga yung binasa mo or nag-memorize ko ba talaga ng provision. Number three, nga lang, ang medyo weird kasi kwenestyo niya yung prof na last question na prof ha, ganyan. So, huwag na huwag yung gagawin yun. Sobrang imposible nun na ikikwestyon mo yung prof na last question na eh. Ba't ka medyo oops, medyo no-no yan. And lastly, um, medyo hindi makatotohanan na ganun lang kaikli yung recipe. Kasi usually, 15 minutes yung allotted time per student. May mga times pa nga na 40 minutes to 1 hour per student yung recipe. Eh. So, nangyari sa amin yan, may mga ganun professor na yung 2 hour, 3 hour class, tatlong tao lang yung natatawag. Pero one time, big time recipe yun na hindi ka na matatawag ulit. So, iba-iba. So, kailangan mo i-anticipate din kung kailan ka matatawag at hindi. So, let's now move on to the next recipe scene. Miss Sosa, please give me the definition of treachery. <laughs> sorry, sorry ma'am, I didn't quite get this. Uh -huh. Sorry, ma'am, sorry ma'am. <laughs> Please give me the definition of treachery. <laughs> oh, mom, okay. Treachery. <laughs> treachery. <laughs> yes, correct. Sit down. Sing up. Mapapansin mo dito, nagmi-make up siya bago magklase. Mm, medyo huwag mo nyo pong gagawin yan. Actually, meron mga, katulad ng sanabi ko kanina, alamin nyo kung sino yung professors ninyo. Kasi during my time, meron kaming mga tips from upperclassmen na may mga professor na ayaw na sobra yung make-up mo pag pumasok. Meron namang mga professors na gusto na ayos na ayos ka pag pumapasok. So, merong mga napag-iinitan, may mga ganong kwento na mapapag-iinitan ka kapag masyado kang nagmaganda. So, huwag ka magmamaganda. Kapag naman yung iba gustong-gusto na nakaayos ka, nakaporma ka. So, iba-iba yung professors. Pero, definitely, don't do this one na nagmi-make up ka pa habang bago mag-class. Nandun na yung prof. So, that's a no-no. And number two, wag na wag niyong pagtatawanan yung professors. just ko, magkamali man yung prof either sa pagsa-grammar or sa pronunciation ng words o kung saan man, wag na wag niyong pagtatawanan ako, just ko po si ate ni Dr. Mary, na nagtatawa-tawa siya habang nagre-recite. So, wag na wag pong gagawin yun kasi just ko, mababwisi talaga yung prof. Another question. If you push a this woman and accidental abortion takes place, can you be jailed? And how could you? No, ma'am. Because it's an accident. Abortion is when you go to the clinic and have the... Okay! Thank you! Mr. Carlson, kapag aksidente, walang abortion. Do you agree? Ma'am, I don't agree. Hmm. Article 257 of the Revised Penal Code prescribes prison correctional for accidental abortion. So, you can be imprisoned as far as long as six years. Oh! You mean that he is wrong? Yes, ma'am. So, your classmate deserves a fight. Ma'am, he is wrong. So, nakita natin yung recit ni Mr. Enzo Pineda. And tama yung format nung kanyang recit. So, paano ba yung tamang format ng recit? Number one, yung first line mo syempre, dat maging responsive ka ng tanong. So, di ba tinanong muna ng prof kung nag a siya doon sa classmate niya? So, sinagot niya muna na, no, I don't agree. Tapos, next one, nilagay niya yung legal basis niya. So, ano yung legal basis niya? Sinabi niya na article blah 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 of the revised penal code provides for accidental abortion, keme keme. And, yung sa dulo, sinabi niya yung penalty na i-impose. So, he was able to answer all the questions ng prof. So, ang proper recitation, be responsive dun sa first question. So, kung yes or no yung question, answer first by yes or no. Kung do you agree with your classmate or are you sure o kung ano man, sagutin niyo muna yung mismong tanong and then, sabihin niyo yung legal basis and then, sabihin niyo yung Conclusion. So, very ganon yung sagot na Enzo. So, good job. Let's now move on to the next recit scene. I hope you're ready. Let's see who's gonna be the lucky one. Abigail Antonio. Upo. Ah! 
In the case of Molina versus Rafferty of 1918, what was the ruling? At ano kinalaman nito sa tax discussion natin? Tax? Hmm? Case? Yes, the one about the fish being an agricultural product. Agricultural products. Yes, what's the ruling? Ruling, sir, um, agricultural product. Tax case. Ano nga yung ruling? Ang kulit. Tax case, sir. Iha. Sayang ka, ano? Ganda lang ang puhunan. Invest ka naman minsan sa mga ibang assets, katulad ng utak. Okay, so unang advice, huwag ka kasing magpula kapag may resit. Well, nagkitang-kita ka dyan, no? Si ate, nangingibabaw. Pero seriously, kapag natawag kayo sa resit na ganun, try your best not to cry. So, kahit na hindi mo alam yung sagot, kahit na parang hindi, nagpapanik ka na kung saan ka huhugot ng sagot, huwag kang iiyak kasi just ko maaalala ka talaga ng proof at baka tumatak na sa kanyang umiyak ka. Also, huwag kayo papasindak dun sa mga ganong tanong na parang may sinabi na agad na tax na parang oh, naratel agad si ate. Try to remember the case. So, mahalaga na meron ka talagang case digest ng mga kaso. And also, very important talaga yung part ng ruling kasi doon naman nagdedwell yung discussion. So, make it a point na you know the ruling of every case. So, case title and ruling, okay na yun. Upot na tayo sa next scene. So, yung scene na yun, hindi ko alam kung paano yung naisip ni Direk, pero pag naisip ko yung law school life ko, kasama talaga yung scene na yun. Yung naglalakad na prof sa hallway, nang parang wala kang ibang maririnig, kundi siya lang. Totoong-totoo yun. Yun yung usual na scenario bago mag-class. Kanya-kanyang spot ng aral yung mga tao. May nasa labas, may nasa loob ng classroom, may naka-headset. Tapos biglang dadating yung prof na ganun, na naglalakad na parang Iba eh, iba yung aura nila, lalo na mga justice. Pag lumakad sa hallway, parang may kapangyarihan. Ito na parang may fog machine sa likod, ganyan yung itsura. Tapos, pag dumaan na sila, parang nagdi-disperse yung mga tao na parang mga langgam. Na parang, oh, nandiyan na, nandiyan na, nandiyan na, nandiyan na yung prof, ganyan. So, ganon ka-intense yung atmosphere. Lalo na yung senior year na sila, tapos justice yung prof. Yung presence, mere presence, may build up na ng tension ka agad. Jesus, Pauline! Did you read everything? Yes. Stop smiling. Now tell me, pwede ka bang tumakbo sa eleksyon kung nakakulong ka? No, Justice Hernandez. Sigurado ka? Ah, ah, I'm not done yet. Sigurado ka? Ah, ah, remain standing. Marquez, Adrian. Marquez, can you? Uh, that was not on the readings po, ma'am. You did not read enough if you do not know the answer. This is a no-brainer. Yes, Pama. Really? Uh, uh, in the case of Halosos and Trillanes, they were in jail, but they were able to run for office. Vicencio Eric! Bago tayo pumunta kay Vicencio Eric na resit, pansinin muna natin yung resit ng dalawang unang students. Yung unang babae, ang napansin ko sa kanya, Uupo siya agad, mayroon pang follow-up question. So, wag niyo ang gagawin yun. Hanggat di pa kayo pinapaupo, huwag kayong uupo. Kasi, nasa prof yun kung papaupoin ko na o hindi. Sa pangalawa, si kuya, medyo ang lakas ng loob niya na sabihin na hindi yun part ng reading assignment. Kasi, hello, di mo talaga yun gagawin. So, part man yun ng assignment nung week na yun o hindi, pag tinanong ng prof, tinanong ng prof. Vicencio Eric! Yes, ma'am? Do you admit? I think you think that's what you think. That's your opinion. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think. Well, <laughs> you think nothing. I don't care about what you think, and I don't care about everybody's opinion. You just give me an answer. Look at me. You give me an answer. Yes, ma'am. Tinabi na kasi wala yung I think. Bawal yung I think, hindi hinahanap ng professors ang opinion nyo. So, sinabi ko na yan, I think, dun sa una ko palang na video ng Practical Law School Tips. So, kung hindi pa yun yung napapanood, 
check it here. Pag nag-recite kayo, do not start your statement with I think because um, the professor is not asking for your opinion. Kasi kung ano lang yung nasa facts nung case, kung ano lang yung nandun sa batas, yun yung hinahanap ng prof at hindi yung opinion nyo. So, never, never, never do that. Yung dito lang, medyo weird lang kasi yung scene ng I think ay ginawa no sa senior year na nila. Which is, I think, hindi na masyado nangyayari during fourth year kasi by the time na mag matapos ang first year, first sem, alam na yun ng mga law students na bawal yung I think. Dito kasi sa fourth year na si nila ginawa. Pero yun, at least nasingit pa rin nila kasi common mistake yun ng mga law students. Second point, it's very common talaga na mag magkakaroon kayo ng different answers ng mga kaklase nyo. So even friends. So wala lang sama ng loob. Kung baga, ano tayo dito, recit lang. Parang ganyan. So yun dito kasi medyo crucial lang kasi pabagsak mo si Carlo Aquino, ba diba? Tapos friend niya yung parang makakapagpahamak sa kanya. Okay, let's go to the next recit scene. Vicentia Eric. Let's go to part one. People of the Philippines versus Acha. Civil indemnity for statutory rape is being pegged currently for 75,000 pesos. Is that correct? Well, na na tapos na po kasi natin last time yung part one. So so that means you're useless. Shall I call someone else? No, ma'am. No. So is it correct? Yes, ma'am. Good. Next question. Civil indemnity for murder is also 75,000 pesos. Kung may napatay ka, 75,000 pesos agad ang bad. Example ako, nakapatay ako, nakarape ako, bayad ako ng 75,000 pesos. Civil indemnity, is it the same for rape and murder that you pay the same amount? Are we putting a price to human life? Um, um there's more, more, more than one way to die. Again, again, please. There's more than one way to die. It's so funny. You're right. There's really one way to die. They're so cheesy, Mr. Vicentio. This is not the Miss Universe. I don't need that kind of answer. Excuse me. Bakit ka naka t-shirt sa loob ng chap? Well, get out. Mom? I said, get out! Ma'am, nahulog lang yung cellphone ko. Are you angry with me? No, ma'am. You listen to me, young man. Today, I accepted a pro bono client. Ang mga kliyente ko, magsasaka. Ang kalaban, mayaman na negosyante na asyentero. Ang abogado ng kalaban namin is very notorious in dismissing cases on technicality. Kapag nanalo kami sa kasong ito, Matatapos na ang sampung henerasyon ng paghihirap. Magkakaroon na ng pag-asa ang mga anak nila. Do you like that? Are you listening? Yes, ma'am. Ngayon, ito ang dapat ninyong maintindihan. Halimbaba ako nagkabali sa inyo. Nagkabali ako sa isang linya, isang salita. Sumablay ang staff ko sa mga kaso this ang dati. So what's gonna happen? Mr. Garcia, you answer for your best friend. The case might be dismissed, ma'am. And then what's gonna happen? The farmers will lose their claim of the land. Precisely. At lahat sila, pati ng maanak nila, ay malulunan naman sa kahirapan, hindi na naman magkaroon ng pag-asa. Kaya walang lugar ang mga sa kwarto nito. Buhay, kalayaan, at pag-asa ang nakataya sa bawat batas at bawat artikulong pinabasa ninyo. O hindi nyo pinabasa. You want to succeed? You sacrifice. Otherwise, you get out from my class. Para natahimik din ako kay Madam. Kay Madam Justice. Pero yeah, unang-una, Wag mong questionin nga ulit yung prof kung nagtanong siya from previous assignment. Okay lang yun kasi ibig sabihin na daanan yun na nga eh. So pwede siyang bumalik doon anytime. Kasi ang assumption ay naaral mo na yun at nabasa na yun at na-retain mo sa utak mo yung pinag-aralan yung last meeting. So pwede niya talagang itanong ulit yun. And number two, this series is very powerful. Dito, in-emphasize ni Justice kung ano yung significance 
ng study of law. So, sinabi niya na marami na kasalalay, marami na kasalalay na buhay, kalayaan, hostisya, etc. Doon sa pag-aaral ng batas, kaya mahalagang malaman niyo na siya by the letter, huwag hindi siya basta dadaanan mo lang. At sabi nga niya ay, um, if you want to succeed, you must sacrifice. So, tama yun. Kasi nga, hindi madali naman talaga yung pag-aaral ng law. So, very powerful yung scene. At kumbaga dyan ka magigising na parang, uy, oh my God. So, hindi ako nag-aaral lang para lang mag-aral at para lang makakuha na naman ng bagong diploma o para lang magkaroon na naman ng bagong profession. But, pinapakita nung scene kung gaano kabigat yung nakasalalay na responsibility sa mga abogado. So, dapat ngayon pa lang as law students, naiintindihan nyo na yon Kasi kung hindi kayo ready dun sa challenge, wag na lang, ba Okay, so yung last scene, lawyers na silang lahat, ba So, nakaka-happy kasi pinakita pa rin dun sa film na iba-iba yung naging journey nila na bago sila naging abogado. So, may nag-first take, second take, may nag-top, may hindi. Pero kahit ano man pa yung naging nangyari sa kanila, ang mahalaga, narating nila yung finish line at naging lawyers na sila. So, ganun din naman tayo. So, huwag tayo mag-discriminate dun sa mga taong nag-second take, nag-third take, nag-fourth take, nag-pressure, etc. Ang mahalaga, pag pumasa, pumasa na. Walang pantay-pantay na abogado na kayo. So, huwag na tayong magpayabangan pa na, eh, second take naman yan, third take naman yan. Dapat walang ganun. Ang mahalaga, naging lawyers. Okay, so that's my reaction na sa Bar Boys film by Direct Tip. So if you haven't watched it yet, please do watch it on YouTube. Ilalagay ko yung link sa baba. Para sa mga aspiring lawyers, panoorin nyo para at least may idea na kayo kung how is it like to be in law school. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat sa panonood. So now, let's move on to the winners of the giveaway. So now, I'm announcing the winners for my birthday giveaway. So actually, my birthday ko ako last week. So this is my way of sharing my blessings to you. Doon sa tatlong mananalo, congratulations. And doon sa mga hindi mananalo, sana wag kayo magtampo kasi ang hirap talaga. I received more than 100 comments. Hindi lang doon sa YouTube page mismo, pati doon sa Instagram. Pero lahat yun nabasa ko and I think I replied to everyone. Unfortunately lang, meron akong mga na shortlist sana. Tapos upon validating, may mga hindi sila nagawa dun sa mechanics. As I've said, I'm very strict with their requirements. So, without further ado, these are the winners of our giveaway. So, our first winner is... Tada! She is a grade 12 student, Joanna Camille Santiago. So, congratulations, Joanna Camille. I hope um, this giveaway serves as an inspiration for you to pursue your dreams in the future to be a lawyer someday. Okay, so our next winner is from Jose Maria College, Davao City. She is Michelle Alaba, fourth year law student. So, congratulations, Michelle. Um, I admire your perseverance and hindi madali talaga yung journey ng law school pero pinagpapatuloy mo pa rin at congratulations kasi fourth year ka na so malapit ka na mag bar I think magagamit mo lahat ng mga materials na mabibigay ko sa'yo so congratulations Michelle and good luck sa bar for our third winner from University of Cagayan Valley he is Al Jafar Enidal. So, congratulations, Al Jafar. I hope ingatan mo tong mga giveaways, lalo na yung books. Kasi first time mo magkakaroon ng mga tong books. Congratulations sa inyong tatlo. And sana magamit nyo talaga yung mga giveaways ngayon at sa mga susunod pang panahon. Maraming salamat sa pagsali. Again, ito yung channel na puro pa giveaway my friends. So, abangan nyo lang yung mga next giveaways natin. Sali lang ng sali. Don't worry because we will be having more giveaways soon. So, just be sure that you already subscribe to this channel and you hit the notification bell para ma-notify kayo agad pag mayroon akong bagong vlogs kasi magpapag-giveaway na lang ako bigla-bigla. So maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. This has been Kish Ehers ito saying the hearing is now adjourned. Happy Aral! Thanks everyone!